Good evening and welcome to this week's special edition of Close Up. Special because this week we focus on IBA News, yes, on ourselves. We're celebrating our 20th anniversary and we decided to look back at our history, talk about some of the challenges and problems facing English news in Israel and look to the future. And who better to discuss all that with than the head of IBA News, IBA's own Steve Leibowitz. Steve, Hi, Leia. welcome Thank this you. week as, as a guest of Close Up. I imagine, as it is for all of us, this is a very proud day for you. Proud day for me was the day that my wife, uh, Ruthie Bloom, agreed to marry me. <laughs> this okay. is a 20-year battle for survival at the Broadcast Authority with limited resources, all sorts of difficulties, time changes, all sorts of things uh, stacked up against us. So we, we get one crew a week sometimes to put out our broadcast. It's IBA News without crews, but we're here, we survived. We've reached a certain plateau. We've lived to fight another day in Israel's battle against all of the, those that give us unfair coverage. We try to give Israel fair coverage. Absolutely. And, it, and you make it sound like it's just been you know, <laughs> suffering and hard work all the way, which it has not. There's been incredible exhilaration. There's been the sense of being you know, on site, on location, covering the important events of the last 20 years. That's been incredible. Very exciting. Uh, I think we've done a, a credible job. I think we've developed an, an amazing number of loyal viewers, both in Israel and right. abroad. The abroad is, is really gone beyond all of our expectations. We didn't even have internet 20 years ago when we began this. We didn't right. realize just how much of a reach we would have. Okay. Well, and now it's time to look at IBA News, the movie. Dennis Zinn and I put together this record of some, just a few of the dramatic events we've covered and the people who covered them, together with voices of people who have been crucial to our history and have plenty of ideas about how we should grow and develop into the future. So here it is, IBA News, then and now. Good evening and welcome to IBA News, coming to you from Jerusalem. Good afternoon from IBA News in Jerusalem. Welcome to IBA News, broadcasting from Jerusalem. I'm Len Brewer. And I'm Kimberly Moore. I thought that the Israel should have broadcast not only in Arabic, and Hebrew, but in French, in English, especially in English, in French and in other languages, in order to broadcast to all the people of the area, of the Middle East and abroad. And when I was appointed as manager of both televisions in Arabic and Hebrew, it happened in 1990, so I pushed it very much. I'm Steve Edwards. And I'm Deborah Reamer. In tonight's headlines, Iraq offers to accept the bulk of UN resolutions related to the Gulf War. When Secretary Baker arrives, what will the Israeli government tell him? Here in the studio to help answer that question is Deputy Foreign Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Good evening. Good evening. From the time that the idea was heading towards becoming a reality, did you find much resistance within television and in. Sure. Always, always. In, in the Hebrew television was a very close circle of people who were very eager not to permit to any other language to be broadcast in the same channel. That's why I, I thought since the beginning that it was preferable to have two channels or more, like in most of the public broadcast uh, services in Europe. I wanted to shut you down. Really? Yeah, maybe it's a, it's a you know, first, <laughs> it's a scoop. But I thought that uh, with the uh, development of television in Israel, and uh, especially when we had cables and we had CNN and Fox and, you know, all the other channels that, that speak English, maybe there's no more need for, uh, for English news in, in Israeli television. Anybody in their right mind you pose it to will say, of course we need it. Who will you find that very few people will say, no, we don't want it, we don't need it. They agree with you. But the, the jolt that's finally come, that has got people moving instead of talking, I think is what you said, is Al, Al Jazeera in English. Because that has really shocked people. It's waked them up. And they're seeing senators and congressmen in Washington and MPs in London 
turning on to Al Jazeera to get their Middle East uh, news input. That is not a healthy situation for Israel. You didn't think that the world needs to hear the Israeli story from us? Uh, no, because uh, I didn't believe in Hasbara, I di I, and I don't believe in it now. And, and you can see that uh, the Israeli Hasbara doesn't help. Our image in the world is worse than ever. We go now live to IBA's Viva Press, who's standing by in Haifa. Viva. Yes, Aaron, that's right. As you mentioned, uh, the northern communities of Israel today were bombarded by Hezbollah-fired rockets. Hours after Rabin Perez and Arafat received the Nobel Peace Prize here in Oslo, Israeli and Palestinian teams gathered for discussions to ensure the peace process and the future of the implementation of the DOP continues. Nicholas Strauss, IBA News, Oslo, Norway. Good evening. Welcome to this expanded half-hour edition of IBA News, which will, of course, be dedicated exclusively to the assassination of our Prime Minister, Yitzhak Rabin. Steve. The stunned and saddened state of Israel is observing two days of national mourning for Prime Minister and Defense Minister Yitzhak Rabin. After Anan left, uh, Steve Edwards was heading the department, and, and he and I were waging constant battles to maintain our presence uh, on IBA at all. There were many moves uh, through the years to actually take us off the air altogether, uh, including directors of Israel Television who thought that we were um, superfluous. Um, there were efforts to take us off of Channel One, uh, and we went to labor court to fight it. We have a very strong, loyal viewership in this country, and thanks to them, we're able to mobilize support. We're able to mobilize a, a tremendous uh, campaign any time our existence is, is threatened. But there are those that want to take us off. We started this campaign, we, we met with the, the heads of IBA, we met with everybody we could, we met with loads of journalists as well, we were all feeling exactly the same. And we were all working for Israel, it was, our, it was the Lebanon war years, and, uh, and we were working on Israel's image anyway. And uh, the first person we approached uh, said, well, you know what, if we start uh, giving news in English, we have to give it in Romanian and in French, we didn't have Russians in those days. I said, it's not for us. It's not for the Anglo population. Too bad if they don't learn the language. It's for the people who come in, it's for the journalists, it's for the diplomats, it's for everyone that comes into our country. Visitors, they're watching Jordan News at 10. And then the other reaction was, well, so what do you want us to be, a Hasbara channel? We're not a propaganda channel. I said, no, you don't have to be propaganda. You have to be Israel. You just have to show people what is going on in our country. And after you were in fact successful and IBA News was created, just a few short years later, there was an attempt from within the Israel Broadcasting Authority to close us down. And we all started, that's when we started with the letters again and we started the lobbying again because we thought that was a travesty. I want to ask you now whether you've changed your mind over, over the years about, about IBA or you still feel the same way? Uh, about IBA News? I changed my mind since, since uh, I, I left you alive and, and did you kick you out. No, but also there was a, there was a protest. Uh, from, there were thoughts in the air and, and, and people started to call and, and say that they hear rumors and there were letters to the Jerusalem Post and there were phone calls that I got from various personalities, that, you know, don't try to do it and things like that. So I uh, surrendered. This week at the Beaufort Castle, a platoon of paratroopers arrived to take part in their third stint of duty in the security zone. Their morale was high. For the meantime, sources here in the Northern Command say they're expecting an escalation in the violence. Dennis Zinn, IBA News. This is uh, Mitsudat Zev, the Jabotinsky Likud headquarters in Tel Aviv. It's very busy here, very active. In about two, three hours' time, everybody will be moving to the uh, convention gardens in Tel Aviv for what they hope will be good news later on. This is Steve Edwards reporting from Tel Aviv, from Likud headquarters. English, as I've said on a number of occasions, is the bastard child of Israel television. We're a very, very small department serving a very important public. And for programming reasons, and later after commercial TV came in, for also for ratings reasons, it was impossible to keep us in any kind of a prime time spot. And it sort of became like a joke where every several months they were bumping us to a new time slot and they were slashing our time allotment. 
That's it for tonight's edition of IBA News. We'll be back tomorrow at 8 p.m. At our Friday broadcast hour of 4.30. We'll be back at 5 tomorrow with the Saturday edition. We'll be with you again tomorrow evening at 6.15. Hopefully you'll be able to join us tomorrow at the same time. That's quarter past seven. From here, the new immigrants will begin their absorption into Israeli society and start a new chapter in their lives. Leah Odenek, IBA News at Ben Gurion Airport. Another announcement that the two rockets had fallen in an open area in a moshav outside of Steyrot. There were no casualties reported there either. The eyes of the country and much of the world were on the Arava today for the signing of the momentous agreement that promised a new era of peace. David Essing reports. Simply to achieve a secure... Under the bright desert sky, the warmth of the sun was a sign of future relations between Israel and Jordan. IBA News regrets to announce that our editor-in-chief, Steve Edwards, passed away this morning following a prolonged illness. He was 57. Edwards was born in Britain and lived most of his life in Jerusalem. He was a filmmaker and editor who had produced and created television programs and documentaries about Israel and the Middle East since 1971. Steve Edwards is really irreplaceable, one of a kind, a master a filmmaker, an amazing person uh, as a manager, uh, as a boss. Uh, I learned a tremendous amount from him. I know that everyone uh, in this department uh, learn from Steve Edwards. And one more thing, Yohanan. Today, the army censor gave orders to the media no longer to disclose the exact location of where the Katyushas fall. I'm Ariel Reshef, and this is IBA News. Prime Minister Netanyahu and his foreign minister will ask the security cabinet tomorrow to approve the Israeli army's withdrawal from the northern section of the village of Rajar. I can tell you, frankly, it's not only by Arabs. Also, I know many foreigners who consider IBA with all its branches as not other than a, a, a tool of the state. I'm sorry. There are those who, who see IBA news as a tool of Israel's Hasbara or public diplomacy and not as an authentic news service. Uh, of course, we object to that uh, definition, but what do you think? I think that the truth is the best lie. And I think that as long as you're authentic journalist, you serve the country as the best way one can. If you, God forbid, had the, the mark, the spot that you are Hasbara, that will be the end of the day for you. Some of our uh, right-wing viewers uh, complain that we are too left-wing. What do you think? They must think I'm on your show too often. Um, no, I actually think that uh, it, it, quite the opposite. Obviously, one of the reasons why I enjoy coming to the program and being interviewed on the IBA English News program is, is because for me it's an opportunity to talk to audiences who usually don't get to listen to me. I think the profile of the average viewer of IBA News in English is right-wing and religious. And, um, and, and I think that the, the program side of the show is directed toward that audience mostly and therefore they're not particularly anxious to hear people like me speak. I do enjoy coming and being interviewed. I think that the questions are always good and I'm given a fair opportunity to speak uh, on the program, which is not always the case in the media. I always feel that I can express myself and I'm never pressured to say anything that I don't want to say. And I've also enjoyed the few opportunities, unique opportunities that I've had to debate Carolyn Glick. I don't think anywhere else in the media that they, anyone would put the two of us together in a room in front of a camera and that's been done on IBA News and I've enjoyed it. It's gotten a lot of hits on YouTube. It's a very popular video so I, I look forward to doing it again. Ambassador Shin, this year marks the 45th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations between the Republic of Korea and the State of Israel. How did it come about? How did it start? Good evening and welcome to this week's edition of Close Up. Sweden is a country that's proud of its liberal democratic traditions but it's a country where today many of the Jews living here no longer feel safe. This is Leah Zinder for IBA Close-Up in Stockholm.
Well, I think that there is uh, probably some uh, American pushback from the Jewish American community. 75 to 80 percent of American Jews voted for Obama. Good evening and welcome to this edition of IBA Close Up. I'm Efrat Batat. We believe that the, the news about Israel is so colored by most of the other press in the world that it's good to have someone from the place where the news is actually happening reporting it from a perspective of the people who are on the ground where the news is happening. So we bring this news not only to the United States but to India and Asia uh, and it's the IBA English News so you have a very large audience out there. So it's not only in America the Christian supporters of Israel that are viewing it, but our news, you're saying, through METV is reaching a whole lot more people. It is. It's in the United States, it's World Harvest Television. We'll see broadcasting's network that's on uh, DirecTV and hopefully soon on Dish Network, but also Far East Television, which covers all of Asia and Africa and uh, a lot of uh, Arabic countries, Muslim countries too. Uh, so our total reach in the United States is a little over 22 million homes. and we're 22 million homes can get Lassie and therefore can get IBA News as well? That's correct. 22 million homes in the United States can see the IBA News every day that is put on, which is Monday through Friday for us. Now, do you have any sense that there is interest um, obviously we're not talking about the big numbers to challenge any of the major networks. Any guess of how many people are watching I IBA News on any given day? Uh, on DirecTV, uh, Lassie Broadcasting is the third most popular of all the Christian networks and the top ten shows uh, on those networks, we have the top three. And the IBA News is number four. Number four yeah. of all of the, those programs. Yeah. So there's a lot of big programs on there that they get because people want to know. It's a broader audience. But most of the Christian shows are really niche markets. But IBA News, I think, uh, uh, appeals to the Christians, but a lot of other people as well. I mean, we, I know we have Jewish viewers because they want to get find out what's going on in Israel. And frankly, it's the only source of news right now in the United States where people feel they're getting the whole story. IBA stands at. Uh an amazing crossroads in where Israel is and needs to be in terms of its overall image in the world. There's a huge tension that, that far surpasses IBA per se. The tension comes from English as the dominant language in the world today on the one hand, not too much English in the news of, of uh, Israel TV, and on the other hand, Israel's rather narrow-minded elite, the people who make the decisions and call the shots, who really are more interested in their own power base and talking to their own supporters and potential supporters than they are in talking overseas. So the problem is that there's a clash. And the reason you guys sit at the middle of that clash is because you represent the potential that is vitally needed for bringing Israel's message to wider international audiences that up until now hasn't really been done. The only good news is that there seems to be more interest on the part of the government from Prime Minister's office on down to correcting that and to helping ensure that the story of Israel, the news and the headlines of Israel in English do get communicated better and more fully to the rest of the world. And before closing, Laura, I want to say happy birthday to IBA English News. Yesterday we celebrated 20 years on the air here in Israel. Thanks to all of our loyal viewers who have been uh, with us these two decades. Yochanan, you look better than you did 20 years ago. A little, uh, little lighter <laughs> hair color, maybe. That's all for today. Thanks for viewing. Okay, so there it is. Uh, now we're going to talk about the future in just a moment, Steve. But first, I want to talk about the whole issue of left wing, right wing that was brought up in the, by several people in the course of the movie. How do you see where IBA stands today politically? Balance is the, is the key. On no particular day can you say it's exactly balanced because we only have these 22 minutes. We try to bring on two guests every day. We try to bring on people on a whole variety of issues. So one day it'll be someone like a Gershon Baskin. Another day it'll be someone like Caroline. Another day it'll be a government spokesman. We try as best we can, and we know that this is the key to success. We have to be credible. We have to show that we're not connected to any political party. We're seeking balance. And as you know, we get a lot of emails about that. People say... 
there is so little time for Israel to explain its position to the world, why waste that time, in quotes, by criticizing the government? Well, look, Israel has blemishes. Israel is a real country that has real problems. We know them. We live here with them. We're not going to cover them up, but we're going to put them into perspective. Israel has to be treated fairly, and I don't think Israel gets a fair shot in the rest of the world media. Right. Here on IBA News, we give us a fair shot. Okay. And there is, of course, the danger, and it is a danger, that we might indeed turn into a propaganda newscast. Uh, some people talked about that issue as well in the course of the movie, and it is something that we do need to address. Anand Safadi told me when we first began, he said, if anyone from the government ever calls you to tell you what to put on the air, do something very simple. Hang up on them. Right. And that's what I would do. We seek out the news. We seek their opinion. We seek their views. We put it onto our broadcast. We don't take any dictates from anyone. Right. And it must be said that uh, not once to the best of my knowledge, and all the time I've been here, has anybody from the government picked up the phone and called us up and said, put this in or leave that out? Not I actually once. know of two occasions, and both times we said no. Okay, well, they weren't, they were, I was not connected to either of those, fortunately. I think we can both say that we will stand firm always against any such attack. Otherwise, we'll lose our viewers, and rightly Absolutely. so. Okay, so now let's talk about 22 million viewers across the United States. Well, that's potential. Can, what, potential. Well, when we went on the air, we were only aimed at the local viewers because right. there was no such thing as Internet. There were no viewers overseas. It was all here. Important, but not the kind of reach that we have today. Today we have many, many more times of viewers outside of the country than we have here. We're getting letters from literally all over the world, especially from the United States on a daily basis. Right. We know and other countries, there. of course, as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, so it, potentially we, we have more viewers today than the top-rated channels here in Israel. Potentially we, we, have, we have the opportunity, but if we're given uh, more time and more resources, we will reach them. Okay, and finally I want to address the point that Charlie Levine raised at the end of the movie, something that we've been talking about lately, <coughs> excuse me, and that is the chance, the probability or possibility that we will expand in the future. Well, let, me, let me put it off the record, just between the two of okay. us. Let me say that there have been meetings, there have been discussions, okay. we are talking about expansion, possibly to several hours every day of English news. Let me repeat that, several hours a day of English news. It will be a major challenge for us to and accomplish. And on a satellite that would carry us to all corners of the world. Into prime time in the United States and, and, and all over the world. And uh, we'll be up for the challenge. If we're given the opportunity, just give us the chance. Okay. Sounds great. Steve, thank you very much. Well, I'm afraid that's all the time we have for today. You're invited to write in with your comments on IBA News. Our address is always ibatvnews at gmail.com. Thanks to producer Irene Carmel Miller. Special thanks to Dennis Zinn. Thanks again, Steve, for being here and you at home for watching. Until next Wednesday at the same time, I'm Leo Zinder. Shalom from Jerusalem.